Hi folks, welcome back. Uh, today, before we get started, I just wanted to uh, give a shout out to uh, our sponsor for today, which is, uh, uh, no, and I'm just kidding, I, I don't have any sponsors, um, but I did make it to a thousand subscribers. I really appreciate all the folks that have been watching these videos and have that have subscribed to the channel. Um, if you're new, you haven't seen anything, please subscribe. That's That really helps out. Uh, I hope to do a lot more this this year with YouTube. Um, and you're uh, watching the channel or watching the videos and, and subscribing to the channel obviously goes a long, long way. So uh, before uh, I get into today's video, I just wanted to, to, to say an extreme thanks to all the folks that have done that. And I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, so thank you. Anyway, with that out of the way, today I wanted to talk about doing uh, what's the difference between um, printing some RGB versus CMYK files. And with that, I wanted to start with every pre-press uh, person's favorite website, which is Canva. And of course, I'm being sarcastic as you can be because most pre-press folks, when they hear their file was generated in Canva, let out a loud groan or throw themselves on the floor and cry um, because there are lots of things that are always an issue coming from Canva. Most of it is not the fact that Canva itself is a bad uh, website to use. <clears throat> Most of it is the fact that people who use Canva are probably not graphic designers or, or design professionals to begin with. So they use a service like Canva because it's easy and uh, it's helpful. I mean, it's really, really good for um, folks who don't know a lot about graphic design. I, I, I will admit that some of their templates are amazing. Um, in fact, I've kind of copied some templates uh, in the past, but obviously just kind of, you know, made those myself in InDesign or, or Illustrator. However, with that being said, here's a couple things that you can, that you need to watch for with pre-press uh, uh, Canva files. Most of the time you get files from, from Canva, it does not include a bleed. Uh, that's number one. And reason why is default People just go up to the share button here, they go to download, and they just click download. And a lot of times they don't even change it from a PNG over to a PDF. But if they do, they'll click PDF for print, and then they click download. They don't click the crop marks, or they don't flatten a PDF, and they leave it set as a color profile of RGB instead of CMYK. And obviously CMYK, with the little crown right here, you gotta pay for it. So some people are using Canva for free, um, they don't want to pay for it, so they're just going to send you an RGB file. So it's not the end of the world if they do, but there is some things that you can do to help with a file like that and also some things to watch out for so that you kind of um, are able to explain the expectations to your customer of what an RGB file will do. So I already downloaded this and I downloaded another one, but I'm going to start with this one here with this blue house. Um, let me close out the other ones real quick. Uh, so <clears throat> this one here, I downloaded from Canva and I just left it as an RGB file. Now, there's one thing that is going to happen when you convert an RGB to a CMYK. Because obviously all jobs are going to be printed on a CMYK equipment. There are no RGB printers, um, at least to my knowledge. I mean, maybe there are, but... Uh, most of the time, a RIP is going to take that RGB file and convert it to CMYK before it sends it off to the actual equipment. Now, most of the time, it's not really that big of a deal. Converting from RGB to CMYK is going to be pretty close to begin with. However, there are some things that have a tendency to change a little bit and can kind of throw things off with your customer. So... It's always good to do a proof, right? And I talked about this in my proof video the other day. Converting your proofs to CMYK first is always important because that's going to give more of a representation of what your file is actually going to look like when it actually goes to your equipment and is printed. One thing that you can uh, do right away to see a difference between an RGB and a CMYK file is to open up your print production, go to preflight, and the middle um, a button here, which is a, uh, these are all checks. They're not going to change the file itself. They're just going to give you some information about it. If I type in RGB, there's one right here that says object uses RGB. 
if I click analyze, this is basically just going to go through the whole file and it's going to show me anything that has an RGB color instead of a CMYK or a, um, a grayscale. So if I pop this uh, little arrow out, this shows me all these different file or uh, uh, bits of text, uh, pictures, um, any kind of, uh, you know, th this is a, a strokes element here. If I click show, uh, it's a path basically that has the color set to CMYK. So in this case, since I downloaded everything as a CMYK, the whole file itself should be basically CMYK. Or I mean, uh, excuse me, since I downloaded it as RGB, the whole thing is going to be set to RGB. So, <clears throat> but anyway, that's a, a quick way to go into a file to identify anything that that might be RGB versus CMYK. Now, if it's just maybe one or two items, you could always just go back to the original file and change it. Unfortunately for this, it's a, uh, a Canva file, so I don't have access to um, the original uh, file. Let's just say this, the customer sent it to me. You know, I can't change it myself. Um, I can select individual items if I, I use the uh, edit object tool here. Let's say this photo. I can click on it, I can go to edit image, and uh, I can open it up in Photoshop and I can change it from RGB to CMYK. Alternatively, I can run a pre-flight uh, pre here and I can go, um, one of the default uh, convert colors uh, settings, or profiles I should say, is called convert to CMYK only. Um, you can do convert to CMYK and keep spot colors. In this case, if I click the output preview, there's no spot colors anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But if I do analyze and fix, I can call this CMYK and save it, and it'll change everything over. Now, if you were paying real close attention, you might have noticed that some of these colors change just slightly. So let me go back in here and let me open up the original for comparison. So if I kind of click back and forth, this is the original RGB format file, and this is the uh, uh, CMYK. So if you kind of pay close attention in these areas here where these, the orange is, and even this like blue background, you can see in the CMYK version, some of these colors have changed a little bit. And this is because obviously the color gamut of CMYK and RGB are going to be different. So the... Uh, by changing the uh, format from RGB to CMYK, it has a tendency to mute the colors a little bit. And uh, if you've ever looked at a file on the screen and then taken it over to the press and printed it out, you'll notice occasionally what will happen is you go, oh, it doesn't really look like what it looked like on the screen. And most of the time it's for that reason. You have an RGB file that kind of just like, it really like pops, the colors pop out. In this case, these these orange areas, they, they do really like pop out and then you convert it over to CMYK and you're like, huh, it looks, you know, kind of dull in comparison. So this is why it's important to send a file like this over to your customer as a proof so that it kind of, you know, tempers their expectations about what exactly the, the uh, uh, file and the print are going to look like. So that's one thing to keep in mind with RGB for CMYK and how you can um, <clears throat> convert over to CMYK from RGB. If I close these out and I open up my other file, this is the, the file that I first showed you from Canvas. Now one of the other things that can that happens is if I go back to Canva here and I click on the uh, text box and I click on my color, you can see the color itself is set to a hex color. So uh, hex color is another indication that this is basically by default, this is going to be set up as an R as RGB, right? So what happens when you convert RGB to CMYK, uh, especially for something like black is, it's not going to give you a pure black file. So if I come back here and I click on my output uh, preview again, and I ch uh, check off the black, you can still see that there are other colors here for these uh, for this text area. And if I zoom in close here, just zoom in right there, and I hover over, you can see that this file or this uh, uh, text is actually made up of a combination of all four uh, CMYK colors. Um, and that's because originally it was an RGB. So in the output, it's going to swap that over 
to CMYK when it prints and the way that it interprets it is basically as a rich black uh, mix. Now, if you're printing to an offset press, this is probably not going to be an issue because offset printing, the ink is going to um, absorb into the sheet and it's going to have a nice flat look. However, if you've ever noticed a digital printed proof or digital printed uh, piece from a toner based uh, printer, it has a tendency for something like this to have the text have a little bit of a raised look to it. And the reason for that is on a toner device, you're basically just applying the toner on the top of the sheet. It's not going to sink in, right? So it layers any color on top of the sheet and then gets sent through the fuser, which will essentially bake the, the toner onto the sheet itself. So if you have a mixture of CMYK for something like this text, it's actually gonna have four layers of toner to make up this text. So most of the time it's not, you know, it's not going to be like, oh, it's super bumpy or it's got like a, you know, like a, a speed bump basically in the middle of the uh, sheet. However, if you run your finger over it, most of the time you'll be able to feel it. And especially this is true for older toner printers. Um, some of the newer ones have more of a flatter feel to it, a uh, flatter look to it. But especially older toner printers, you'll be able to kind of feel that bump um, when you go over it text like that so what, do, what can we do about it well you can open it up in illustrator you can select all these individually and you can change it to 100 uh, percent black now obviously if this was a you know 200 page uh, file you you're not going to do that because you're gonna have to do it for 200 uh, pages so of course we have a nice little pre-flight that we can use to change that over so if you click on the single fix up here um, <clears throat> I have mine labeled as map RGB black to CMYK black only. Now there, there is a default here in the color spaces, spot color and inks in the, um, Acrobat Pro DC 2015 profile. It's called something a little bit different. I changed the name of it when I went into edit here because I kept forgetting what it was called. So I put it as RGB black to CMYK just so that I would remember it a little bit easier. But if you click on it, you'll see this description here. And basically what it's gonna do is it's going to find anything with a 000 RGB uh, uh, color out, uh, profile and it's going to swap it over to 100% black and 100, uh, 100 only, no yellow, no magenta, no cyan. So it's basically it's gonna transfer RGB black over to 100% pure black. If I click on edit and just kind of look at what exactly is happening here in the uh, color spaces, the type of fix up is map colors. And then uh, basically what it's doing is it's looking for RGB and it's going to have 000, a tolerance of 30%. And then it's going to remap it over to CMYK 100%. It's also going to do this only for text objects. So it's not going to do it for paths or uh, photos or anything like that obviously um a photo at, you don't want that to happen because most of the other stuff is going to be um uh paths and, and things like that are, are not going to be set that same way um it also do this for uh cmyk that is set to one you know basically kind of registration 100 100 100 100 it'll change all of that out so um if I run this real quick, I can click fix and I'll call this uh, pure black text. Hit save. You can see here it ran through 22 different objects that applied this to. And if I click back on my output preview and click uh, uncheck the process black, now all of the text has disappeared. And if I zoom in close, hover over, you can see that this is now set to a 100% black uh, color. So now when I take this over to my toner printer, I'm not going to have that little bumpy feel to the um, to the text. And uh, I know a lot of people don't 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 like that. So um, by running this pre-flight there, that basically takes care of that problem. So that's a, a couple different ways of dealing with uh, Canva files and some of the the issues that it can cause. Um, obviously, if your 
customer has sent you a file that they have set up with um, a uh, PDF print with the CMYK. Um, I actually don't know if that automatically converts everything over to CMYK, like or, or excuse me, a uh, pure black with the text. I would tend to doubt it. So you probably will still have that issue with the text file itself. Although the of uh, the entire file will be converted over to CMYK, so you won't have the first problem that we talked about in this video. But uh, there's a couple different ways to deal with Canva files and dealing with RGB versus CMYK. I'm not going to go into all the details, obviously, about you know the difference between RGB and CMYK because um, there's a lot of technical stuff in there. There's some great videos already on YouTube that uh, talk about that in more detail. And, you know, if you're looking to learn a little bit more about it, you can watch some of those. Um, however, from a pre-press side of things, this is always an issue that I've run into in the past dealing with Canva files. So I just wanted to share that with everybody today, how you can kind of go around all that and uh, uh, some of the steps that you can use to to get around some of these Canva files. Anyway, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'm happy to answer. If you need to talk about anything in more detail, that's always the best way is just reach out. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Again, thank you guys all. Uh, thanks all you guys for, you know, a thousand subs and, um, you know, we'll, we'll keep it going moving forward. If you have any questions about or uh, have any ideas for a future video, also please put those down in the comments. I'm always open to suggestions. If you guys want to see see something in particular, put it down there and I'll see what I can do. If not, just thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.